Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tony Robertson here, who's going to talk about, um, I guess, part two from what you talked about last year, right? Uh, More or less, kind of, sort of? It's, it, it's kind of part two of a big, long presentation, uh, okay. so I split it okay. in two. So, <laughs> so I shortened it down for this presentation. Okay. All so. right, stage is yours. Uh, most of the people know me either by Glenn or Tony. I already said that. I got to do some politics here. I work for NASA. NASA didn't pay me to come. NASA don't pay me to do this work. Uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about why I call this entanglement drive here in a little bit, but I'll just get, I want to start with this equation. This is a new equation for acceleration that I came up with. It's derived out of a, out of a cosmology model called chameleon cosmology. I'm trying to get away from that term chameleon cosmology in this. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I renamed it to, uh, to the entanglement drive, and, and I'll speak a little bit why it's entangled in a few minutes, but I wanted to just bring up the equation first and then go through how this equation was a little bit developed and tell you what it's about. Uh, I'll tell you about a what a density field is here in a few minutes, but this basically is the acceleration of that density field. Uh, the density field is really uh, a field around a mass and the mass itself. Uh, there's an equation I have for the uh, estimated excel, uh, estimate radius of that uh, density field. Uh, I have a phase factor, but I'm really calling it a phase factor now is kind of kind of a little different now. It's kind of worked itself into something differently. Has the Planck length in it. Uh, has the gravitation acceleration of local gravity in it. Uh, number six in it, and then this is what stuff means. C is this refers to the object that you're looking at accelerating. Uh, th uh, this refers to the, the density field. This is, uh, A just means the density field is accelerated, and then M is just the, lo the local gravity source that you have here. I know it's maybe a little bit difficult to understand now, but hopefully I, I'll hey, explain. Yeah. How are you estimating the radius of the accelerated density field? I'll give you an equation here in a few minutes. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to throw this out so because usually by the time I get to this equation, I've had so many arguments about the theory that I don't ever get to the equation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, basically, you don't have to, this equation, you don't have to have any mass ejected, but you do have to have a reaction mass. Let's see where we're going. The so density field is kind of like a warp bubble, and I'll show you that uh, representation a little bit later. Uh, and this phase factor is kind of like a time ch change ratio between the warp bubble and the erection mass within the warp, warp bubble with respect to the effects on the universe itself. <clears throat> and, and let's see, maybe I should go to, no, I think I took it out. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, within the uh, uh, chameleon cosmology, uh, they, they have something called a thin shell mechanism. And, uh, and uh, they derive a force equation using this thin shell mechanism. Basically what this uh, uh, thin shell mechanism is, it's, an, e it's a, an equation for the thickness of a, of a, of a thin shell around all masses that uh, because it, it, it's there, it gives a slight um, subtraction from gravity. So basically what chameleon model says, but they don't say it in their papers, is that there's a natural anti-gravity force that already exists in nature and it's this thin shell mechanism they talk about within chameleon cosmology. And what I did was took their, their uh, gravitational equation and converted it to an acceleration equation. But basically uh, 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 within this model if you um, you can you can calculate thin shells from any distance uh, from the center of the mass all the way out to infinity uh, if you wanted to do that. But the first thin shell is what I'm more interested in in all my equations, which kind of is being shown by this. And, wh and what this, is, this model is saying is that when an object, object is accelerating, then the thin shell that's typically uniform around an object changes and it pulls out in the direction of acceleration. <clears throat> it, well. If I understand this model, it's a multiple nested model in terms of multiple thin shells, not a single thin shell? <laughs> the chameleon cosmology only addresses a single thin shell. But if you take the equation for the thickness of that thin shell, it's based upon the density with, with, within some spherical boundary you, you've determined. So if you take any spherical boundary from the center of any mass, you can calculate a thin shell out to infinity. 
<clears throat> and what I didn't bring in here that's in my part, part one is that if you took a single mass uh, in a mini universe, it was only mass there, you'd have this unring effect out, out to infinity. So basically your entire universe is, it can be defined by these thin shell rings out to infinity. But with our, within our universe, since we have multiple masses that started as a single mass, then the, uh, basically you say space-time is a, is a time-wise compilation of all these thin shells. So they're all coupled through time. And what the entanglement in, in this model means is that there's a, uh, uh, a, a historical entanglement of these thin shells from the beginning of time till now. That's Are kind you of saying what, that the thin shell is uh, related to the Planck length scale? Um, it's according to your previous slide. Planck length is in these equations and the Planck length comes out of the uh, chameleon, my, my um, calculations out of chameleon cosmology from a gravitational equation to an acceleration grade. It just followed through and continued to stay with the equation. So, uh, yes or no, I mean, it, you it's can interpret it, you can interpret related to the Planck length scale. Yeah. Yes. I guess, yes. <coughs> so is this all it's some, kind of like a boundary layer? In a, in a, in a, in a sense, yeah. it's some kind of boundary layer around all math. Uh, you, it's, a, it's, it's a thin shell that you can calculate, physically calculate from the parameters of the mass itself. And what I, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. And so what I did is I turned it from a gravity equation to acceleration equation. But what I found out was that, <clears throat> I, uh, that if, it, if there's particles inside that mass, and these particles are defined by K, I just want to have the particle. It will, it will also push that thin shell out. And, and, and so, you, so you don't have to, have to, and they don't have to be expelled in the mass. It'll, it'll cause the thin shells to shape in, 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 in this manner. And of course, if the, this one pushes out, then these in the back have to pull in a little bit too. So you basically, you've got, the, you've got a force pushing on the mass from here and, and, and basically sucking it out, <laughs> sucking it forward in this model. And again, it's like a warp bubble, uh, and I kind of show that here. The, the interpretations of what's going on is almost swap. You will have a, your thin shells are contracting on this side, where in the base bubble they're, they're contracting out this way. And the, and the thin shells are expanding this way, what they call it expanding here. And I'm not sure I follow warp bubble uh, much, but what I think what they're saying when they're saying expansion is that the the space is pushing on it behind, and they call that expanding. I, I think maybe uh, Mark showed that in one of his models, but but there, it it looks similar to a, to a warp bubble. Where are we going here? Okay. In that in that acceleration equation, I had that phase factor that I called. And what it turns out to be is a time rate of change of the density field. And the density field is this thin, uh, is this, uh, thin shell and the mass inside it, the density is within inside this thin shell, which includes the mass itself. So it's a time rate change. Basically, it's a time rate change of the thin shell, but I call it a density field. Uh, over the time rate change of the mass is being accelerated with, within your density field. But uh, I, uh, and, and, I, and I had this back in 2014, but I just recently found out I had to add this, uh, which basically is a universe normalization of, of the time rate of change of the, of the mass's effect on the universe divided by the universe normalization of the, of the time-wide change of the density field on the universe. And, and, and I'll show you how that works in, in, uh, later on. And then you asked, what the radius was. So this is the equation I came up for the radius. This did not come out of chameleon cosmology. It, it, it basically came out of um, when, I, I, when I first developed the acceleration equation was, <coughs> was to try to match it towards rocket equations. And so in, 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 in writing the rocket equation under this acceleration model, that's the equation I had to came out with for, 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 for this um, estimated radius. Uh, and, and so this is uh, they see acceleration of E particles, acceleration of gravity, the, the masses that's being accelerated over the total mass of, of, of what's being accelerated. And you can see that uh, in some systems this could be quite small. So this whole thing could actually be quite small. And, and, in, and in terms really this is a force and this is a force too. So. 
see where we're going with it. And again, you can uh, that density field can be looked at like a warp bubble. Uh, what I wanted to point out here is when this uh, time rate of change of the, of the density field is approximately equal to the time rate of change of the effect of the universe, then it implies a Mach effect system. And I'll show you how uh, that came, comes out later. <clears throat> Now, and in the rocket equation, uh, these two values are equal, and you're only left with the, the, the time frames up here. So, so different systems can can affect this guy right here, and it's basically this is your uh, system parameter, what, whatever system you're you're you're, you're designed to create some kind of force. This is what will change between those systems because these times uh, factors change between systems. Okay, the problem you have though is that if you're not expelling the mass you're accelerating, <coughs> then once you've accelerated all the mass you can, you're, you're, you're dead in the water. You can't do it. So you have to let it relax back into your system so that you got to, if you have a system, you got to make sure that your, your forward acceleration of your mass is greater than your backward acceleration of your mass. If they're equal, you're not going anywhere. The forces are going to cancel out. So, you, so, so basically you end up having an equation that kind of looks like this. Because they're going back and forth, there's a frequency component you have to put in there. And because you have a frequency point, there's a time factor you have to put in there to take out that time, uh, to cancel out the time factor on your frequency. And then this is it, that acceleration equation I have for both the forward and the backward motion of your, of your system. And of course, frequency and your time rate change of density field. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I'm calling this an entanglement drive. But it can be changed. Uh, but you, the equations all come out for the forward and backwards. They're both the same. Uh, these things are kind of like um, um, geometric parameters. They tend to be factors of pi. You know, three fourths pi, pi pi, or something. And I'll show you how they work out in some stuff later. But they're both the same. But you're going to have a different value for this. This is a this is the distance that something moves in in your system if you cr you created. So the forward distance that moves and your and your, and your backward distance that move uh, should uh, should be different if they're the same or if the uh, these geometric parameters are the same. You have no force. So you, so you have to set up a system where they're different. <coughs> you have a, <coughs> I've color, uh, you have the equation for the R for both the forward and the backward that I showed you earlier. I've color coded these because uh, I'll point out next something about these, but you have two types of systems that you have uh, that I've I've studied. I call them type one and type two, and and uh, the uh, Mach effect structure is actually a type two, and it's it's a, uh, type one systems where you know the acceleration of, of your mass inside side it going backwards and forwards and you know what the mass is that you're going back and forth. Where type two, they're unknowns. So you have to guess what they are from, from your data that you have. And that's what I did with the, the, the Mach effect thruster that I'll, sh I'll show you here in a bit. Okay, I wanted to point out that this ME value that's here is, is equal to the fourth root of the Cosmological constant divided by eight pi, and then the Planck uh, length squared, and it's about uh, uh, well, was that ten to the low, ten to the fourth meters under meter. Anyway, it's pretty small, it's a pretty big number, but the meters is under the. But the poignant thing is that it has a cosmological constant in in this. Okay, okay. Now, I've develop, been developing these little actuators for several years, and uh, I realized one day that they're, they actually have a mass that's moving, but it's not leaving the system. And I said, well, if it has a mass that's moving, not leaving the system, then the equations I have should predict the force that's on, the, uh, on this actuator. So I took one of my actuators, put it on the load cell and did it in, 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 in one direction, which is the solid line, and the other direction, which is solid line. And basically, they come out with a force trace that were similar. There's some difference because the, the, there's two coils in these actuators, and they're pulsed differently, and, they're, and their turns are, are slightly different. So, so the power input for the two coils are different. So, so it, there should be a slight behavior difference, which does show up. <coughs> and what I want to point out is that this downward 
um, part here, and which is the same as the upper part, is really the the force given from this equation uh, that I have, which is the mass times this acceleration equation I have, minus the thrust that's being caused once this actuator armature actually moves. So, so it's showing about you know 12 pounds of thrust on this system going the other way, but it doesn't leave the system, so it it impacts and stops, and when, when it impacts and stops then that's what starts bringing you back up. But this upward curve then really is your impact force plus your thrusting force, or plus your, um, this um, uh, entanglement force um, minus the thrusting force. But in a normal system, the impact force and thrusting force should be the same. So the only thing you should be left with is, is the, the force due to this new equation, well, new physics I come up with. And what you'll notice is, is that, that from, from the force here to here, the for, thrusting force being canceled by the impulse force up to here. So what you're left with up to 20, 20 uh, pounds of force, that whole 20 pounds is this, is this force right here that uh, the actuator is causing. <coughs> and so, I sat down and said, well, if, if that 20 pounds of force is caused by, by my new uh, equation, well, it's not called by my new equation, it's predicted by my new equation, then you can calculate what it is. It comes out to be 404 meters per second. And then I know what this parameter is and this parameter is from my device, and, uh, and, and uh, I know what the, uh, the actuator radius is. And also I know what all the time, so you calculate it, comes out to here. So, then I, I know what the equation is for form of this equation. So what I was missing in here is I knew what the distance it was moving, I knew what the the, uh, the actual radius was moving, I did, but I was missing terms, and it turned out that the terms that fit it was this ME term I showed you, and then this geometric factor just turned out to be about eight pi. Uh, so basically it's eight pi over some uh, new value, which is basically, this is the error between the the model and the experiment, which was very small. And once I, I knew this, I then looked towards the wood the work that the paper that uh, Heidi did that had these three po four points in it, and give, and it's kind of a, a nice uh, quadratic type of, of system here, and said okay, uh, if it follows my equation, then I, it should be the 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 mass of the uh, total met thruster times the frequency of operating times the time uh, rate of change of the field which I uh, have, to, have to assume, but I'll show you what it is, times that acceleration equation I showed you at the beginning, which then is, so if I set this time rate of change for the density field to, to be four pi over the uh, estimated radius at density field over, over, over C, uh, speed of light, put that in equation, then you have this complicated equation like here. I just use the, the weight, the mass times the gravity, then that's the equation I gave you at the beginning. But yes. In her paper, she says that the relationship is quartic, the force power, not the square. I I basically have to ignore everything she said in her paper except for uh, one equation. <laughs> 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 but I don't I don't want to get into that. But but, but yes, I, I I started out trying to use the equations in her paper, and after emailing her a few times, there's actually a couple of equations there that are wrong, and uh, so I said, okay. This no, no, but, but but it's not an equation. She she said that she's fitting experimental data. And the experimental data, experimental data, fits a quartic and not a quadratic. Okay, let me show you what I got. Okay. So basically, I I, I determined that uh, this phase value w was here, but um, what you see, uh, this is the equation I gave you earlier. But you see that there's a two missing out of here. And, and, and this uh, distance value missing out of here. And it turns out that if you let a d, a dt of the fa phase equal uh, dt of the, of the effect on the universe, then your r value comes out to be uh, this me times the distance times the r. And, and because r is this, it drops that out of that equation. And it's all in that paper. If anybody wants a copy of the paper, I'll show you how that's did. But this is basic, other than those four dots that's in the graph, this is the only equation I used out of the paper. This is the exact equation she's using in the paper, and, and this is the distance that the piezoelectrics deflect due to the voltage applied. Uh, I, I think this is the stack height, and then these are parameter, uh, 
uh, to, uh, parameters of the piezoelectrics themselves. So, so if you, and I just want to point out that that's got the cosmological constant in it. <laughs> And then when you plot the data that's in her paper into the uh, put put the data in the paper into these equations, you get a a, a, a trace that looks like this, it's, which is a little uh, just a little bit higher uh, than the data that's in the paper. And, and if you take and I now took a closer look at what's going on there, and I basically said, what if we assume that you have um, the 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 uh, Ford the forward acceleration that causes deflection is caused by the voltage that's applied, but when you come back, it's a mechanical force. And I said, well, if that mechanical deflection is, is since the, the distance that it moves is very small, we can assume that's constant, and, we, and if we assume that's a constant mechanical force back on the system, about 10 to the minus 6 newtons, and then subtract that from the other equation, <clears throat> then you can set up a, a thrust equation for the voltage part that when you apply the voltage and mechanical minus the mechanical part, and you end up with this equation here. That when you plot it, you get this, <clears throat> which is probably closer than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so basically, uh, then I can I'm summarizing that that regardless of whether you're a mock effect thruster or a new uh, space propulsion system of any kind or even a warp drive, that this equation will apply to it. And, you don't, and this equation says you don't have to eject the mass out of the equations. And basically all you really need to know is the forward and backward accelerations of these masses and, and the frequency that these masses are accelerating. And then I wanted to just do some forward thinking on this thing. Uh, what I this value of six, but uh, in a G is the only thing that's left over of chameleon cosmology. But really, my my definition of G is not the same thing as chameleon cosmology. This is this G in my equations is actually the <coughs> the magnitude of the vector sum of all the all the gravitational forces on your system, including the mass itself. Because if you if if it's if it's if the mass itself is not included in that. Then, if you get out into the way out of the universe with another gravitational force is on you, then this would be zero, and, and it can't be zero because it's probably still accelerating. So, so, so what I I assume in my theory is that this is really a sum of all the gravitational forces, the vector sum, including the mass itself. But typically, it's going to be your local gravitational field, like the Earth. So that only left the six that came back out of the chameleon cosmology. And, and uh, I, I always thought it was odd that it fell out as six. And they said, it can't be a constant. It can't be just six all the time. So what I found out is that for the uh, actuator device I did, if you put the acceleration of, of, the, of the armature that's moving divided by uh, the gravitational force of the Earth and take the, uh, the log of it, it comes out to 5.99. That's six, <laughs> and and so I I I did, I did an estimate on the acceleration I expected for the for uh, the mock mock thruster that y'all did, and and put it in there. And the only thing, only thing it did was move this over just a little bit. But that that that's what you have there. You have a negative thrust below uh, 100 volts. I'm saying that you won't basically you won't see anything once you. Below 100 volts. This is just. It. But I, I thought that she had a, an experiment uh, near zero. It doesn't. The first one here is here. Acceleration at zero volts. <laughs> well, actually, actually, this needs to be proven by these guys that they don't see anything below this. I mean, I'm not saying this is the exact. You can turn it off and you already got minus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I saw that they had experiments going uh, backwards and forwards, and they had uh, they, they have a number of points. They just rotate it. Uh, show, showing, showing that it doesn't go negative. Trust me, Tony, no voltage, no thrust. <laughs> <laughs> what, what this basically is saying is that once you reach this voltage here, you get no more thrust. This is not saying you get negative thrust. This and the other it. problem is that the, the equation you showed wasn't dimensionally correct. 
Uh, believe me, I check all the dimensions. Ever yeah. since uh, the beginning. No, show me the one where they had the piezoelectric coefficient D as in dog. <laughs> yeah, we know that. That one, D K V. That that's not dimensionally correct because the D should be a function of the electric field, and the electric field is the voltage divided by the length of the stack. It, sh it should not be just the voltage. But, uh, this is the equation I got out of her paper. Well, that equation is wrong. It's wrong. It's, it's yeah. you have a D. We were just guesstimating at that point. Okay. So this is just an estimate, so my equation is an estimate, which I'll agree with. <laughs> <laughs> it's an estimate that makes it, uh, fits it fairly well. Uh, the other, th uh, other thing is, that I, when I was at that conference in New York, uh, Intercell Workshop, I, uh, this person kept telling me, he said that when, when you reach the speed of light and you're still putting energy into a system, you're, you're violating the conservation of energy. So I said, well, let's solve that. Let's throw something like the Lorentz factor into this equation. But, but I'm still not convinced that, uh, this is, that I should use it this way, but I'll discuss that later. But anyway, this is just the velocity, and, and this is just a holding place. It, this may not be the right velocity to use because this is not the velocity of your vehicle in this thing. But just to working forward, I, I want to start adding this and, and see if I, you know, as we get data, see if that hold, continues to hold up. Because uh, what this does, it, it, it drives you to zero when, when all, all, only acceleration on your, on your object is the acceleration of gravity. <clears throat> uh, and and that, that's kind of needed in this equation. And since, like I said, it it's, doesn't seem really change stuff that much, I, I want to keep that. And this, I, I, I may, I'm not convinced where to put it in there, so I just put it in there. But it needs to be in there so that you don't violate energy when you get, reach the speed of light, if you ever reach the speed of light. And that's, that's, that's it on, on part two. If anybody has any questions. Are you all so, still thinking yeah, so, about it? So what, what is uh, little g uh, capital M? Uh, that's, I, I went over that a few minutes ago. This is basically the vector sum of all, it's the magnitude of the vector sum of all the gravity forces on your object. So you have buried within that the, the G constant, the gravitational yeah. constant. Yeah. That, that's, that's not capital G, that's little g. Um, so so uh, it is different in the moon than it, than it is on, on, on Earth. Yeah. And like I said, once you go away from all, all, all gravity sources whatsoever, that reduces to the gravitational forces of the object itself. Which is, zero, which is practically zero. Yeah, but it's not zero. It's practically zero, but it's not practically zero. zero. Ten, ten to the so this the equation minus. never goes to zero due to gravity. Space drive that doesn't work in space. Yeah. So it's a space drive that doesn't work in interstellar space. <laughs> 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 it, it, works, it, works better, it works better in Jupiter than it works in... Uh, Just once you get to the Lagrange point, you stop. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is just what this is really just a constant that you throw in the equation based upon the gravity force. What gives you your, your forces in space is how these other other two parameters but are. I don't know, but in that theory, if I if I have that drive at the moon, do I put the G for the moon or do I or do I put the G for some what about G? Then? It's whatever it's whatever the vector sum the absolute value, the vector sum of all the gravitational forces on your object at the point you are in space. So it's the G for the moon. So it's the G for the moon. So it is, it's, it's a lower for it's a lower acceleration in the, that you get at the moon than you get at uh, at the uh, gravity well. So for, so this is the, uh, this C comes in play here. But you're drive, dividing by it, so it makes the six I see. a bigger number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll go back further. And it comes in play here too. There's, there's, the whole, you know, this guy is going to change because of G, not just that whole equation, just, that's just, just an equation. Are any more questions? Can we thank the speaker? So, uh, what changed from the rocket equation that you gave last year in Estes? Uh, 
the difference in the rocket equation is you, is you basically uh, invert uh, this and put it underneath here, and you and you have two R's. Uh, you you have the uh, basically in the rocket equation, everything is definable by things of the rocket, and, and the R values uh, you don't have to calculate using an equation. They're defined by the by the radius of the throat and the radius of the nozzle, and so and you end up with uh, uh, I forget which one. One of them minus the other one in the equation. But well, you last year question. with the equation from last year, had you look at the Mach effect drive, or you can only look at the EM drive for the with the equation from last year? I haven't looked at the EM drive from the equation standpoint. All I've done some graphical models of it, but not with this equation. With this equation, last, last this year's model. equation, you look at the EM drive, right? No. 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 I, in the, I didn't get rid of this thing. In, in the uh, equation I gave previous to this, I only had three three cases I'd looked at: a ballistic object, uh, the entanglement drive object, which which is what I went through, and the rocket object. So, what was the, the entanglement drive last year? That's case two. The, the, Last year, I had not done the uh, the market threat thruster yet. But had you done the EM drive? No, I, I have not got an equation for EM drive yet because I don't have enough data to do the equation yet. <clears throat> okay. But I have graphically modeled it. <clears throat> what is the material you're using for your piezoelectric transducer? PZT. PZT four. Yeah. PCT4. Yes. That's a it's a, a uh, car. Zirconate? It's, it's a car PCT. Oh, zirconate titanate. Yes. I see. Okay. Thank you. And I'm not claiming that this is 100% correct. It's still early stages to say that. But it would be helpful if some of you guys would help me. Uh, work on this for some other systems and, and improving uh, even higher system because the mechanical part of this needs somebody needs to to it's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and correct this D value. I, I don't expect this D value to uh, even if you have change that equation, it's going to affect us too much. <coughs> um, this has been pretty. Um, Making some changes to this hasn't really changed the data, uh, the end results that much. Well, right now we have a, a coffee break, and then we'll start at, at three, actually. So, okay. Just do it.